Hello and welcome to today's webinar. Today we're going to be looking at creating UDFBs in Seascape's IEC editor. Let's get started. Let's look at our agenda for today. We'll start with a quick review of user-defined function blocks. We'll look at UDFB languages and using UDFBs in ladder, function block diagram and structured text. There will be demonstrations throughout and we'll finish with a Q&A session. So now we'll have a quick review of user-defined function blocks. These are code sections that a programmer can turn into a function block. Unlike predefined function blocks selected by Horner Engineer, these are code sets. User-defined function blocks are personalized by programmers. They decide the function they need and write the code for it. This allows them to reuse the function in different programs. Unlike subroutines, UDFBs have their own specific variables. If you use multiple instances of a user-defined function block, each one has its own set of inputs, outputs and internal variables. This is a feature not available with subroutines. Once created, UDFBs can be used multiple times within a project and can be used in any future Seascape project. This capability offers several significant advantages. Now we'll look at the basic workflow for creating user-defined function blocks. The first step is to isolate the logic you intend to turn into a function block. This could involve writing it from scratch or extracting it from a previous program. It's crucial to thoroughly test this logic to ensure it functions precisely as needed and that it includes all necessary data or code for the UDFB creation. Once the logic is refined, the next step involves examining the inputs and outputs to compile a list of variables to be designated as UDFB inputs and outputs. Other variables that aren't inputs or outputs will become internal or private variables exclusively used by the UDFB not accessible externally or within the rest of the program. The next step is to create a new program in the Seascape Navigator and add a new UDFB, giving it an appropriate name. Upon naming it, a new section appears under the UDFB name in the program variable window. Here, you can define the required input, output and private variables. Once this is set up, you can copy and paste the previously isolated, tested and refined code in the logic section of the UDFB. If the code is relatively concise, manual input is also an option. Subsequent steps involve thorough testing, exporting the UDFB to reuse the function in other projects to verify its performance across multiple instances. While the process might appear extensive, the ultimate result is a well-tested piece of code that not only saves time, but also minimizes programming errors in future endeavors. Now we'll look at the differences between using and making user-defined function blocks in our IEC editor compared to the variable-based advanced ladder editor. First, we'll talk about variable names. In the variable-based advanced ladder, the way we work remains the same as we described earlier, but the variable names inside the UDFB here include the UDFB name before them. For example, if your UDFB is named convert and you have a variable called enable, in the variable-based advanced ladder, this variable becomes convert.enable. This is how we name them. But in the IEC editor, we don't add. Unlike subroutines, a variable like enable stays as enable. 
but it's important to know that if you use the same variable name enable in other parts of your program, there might be problems because of this naming style in IEC. Now we'll look at compatibility. It's good to understand that you can directly move a Seascape logic file created in IEC and use it in variable base advanced ladder. The same goes for UDFBs. UDFBs in the ver UDFBs have their have a CPU extension in their names, while in IEC they have an XK5 extension. Plus, the way the files are set up is different, so you can't switch them around easily. Lastly, we'll look at logic visibility. In the variable based advanced ladder, when you create and export a UDFB, you can choose to hide all the logic inside it. But in IEC, this option isn't available. This is another unique thing to remember. The languages available for creating and using user-defined function blocks are consistent across the board. They encompass three widely used options, ladder logic, function block diagram, and structured text. Additionally, instruction list can also be utilized, although it's not as commonly used these days. However, sequential function chart is absent from this list as it's not suitable for working with user-defined function blocks. Now we'll look at Seascape where we've set up a basic application. The primary focus is on demonstrating the process of creating and utilizing user-defined function blocks rather than generating a highly functional UDFB applicable to everyone's needs. For this purpose, we'll look at a simple task, converting a floating point value from degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. The intention is to illustrate the creation and use of UDFBs, so we're discussing a single rung in this scenario. The objective is to showcase the process, so now we'll look at what steps we need to take when it comes to creating a UDFB. The initial stage involves isolating, writing and thoroughly testing the logic, which we have already done. Moving on, the next step is defining the input, output and internal variables. In this case, our function block's input variable is the original value in degrees Celsius. The output variable is the converted value in floating point degrees Fahrenheit. Additionally, for the ladder implementation, we require an internal scratchpad floating point variable for intermediary calculations between multiplication and addition. Essentially, we're referring to one input, one output, and one internal variable in this simple instance. Once again, the initial priority is to ensure testing to validate the proper functionality. As we see here in our setup, a value of 100 degrees Celsius, the boiling point of water, converts to 212 degrees Fahrenheit as expected. This thorough testing confirms the accuracy of the logic. Now we'll create a new program, a vital step that supports UDFB development. To do this, we click on File and then choose New. Opting for an IEC program is a good fit since we're making an IEC user-defined function block. Once the program is open, We'll navigate to the Project Navigator, then we'll go to Control, and under Logic Modules, we'll choose UDFB Variables. Right clicking, we'll select New UDFB Block. In IEC, there are four language options available to build the UDFB. For this demonstration, we'll use Ladder Logic. This is where we give a name to the UDFB, such as degrees C to degrees F. With that, we've named our custom function block. The next task involves setting up necessary variables to make using the UDFB easy. You'll notice a new section in our programs variable window. We'll add the required variables here. 
In this case, we have an input variable named input value, specified as a real number rather than a simple on-off choice. We also need an output parameter, which we'll call output degrees Fahrenheit. This one is also a floating point number. Now we'll add one last variable, our internal or private variable. This will also be a floating point value and we'll name it scratchpad. So these are the variables we need to add. Now we'll insert the necessary logic within this function to perform the task. We'll go back to the original program where we've already thoroughly tested the logic. We'll copy everything, even the comment, even though that is not essential. Then we'll switch to the new program and navigate to the section for the new user defined function block. We press Ctrl plus V to paste the logic in there. In the context of a variable based advanced ladder, this is where we'd usually add the UDFB name as a prefix to our variables. However, we won't do that here as it's not needed. Nevertheless, we'll double check that the variable names are correct. So input value remains input value, scratchpad remains scratchpad, and output degrees F remains output degrees F. So everything seems to be correct. So what we've achieved is the creation of a user-defined function block named degrees C to degrees F. Now we'll move ahead and test it out. Now we'll enter the main loop of the same program. We'll create a new module for the main loop and then proceed to build a new ladder logic block. While we can use this UDFB in any of these languages except for SFC, let's stick with ladder logic for now. So how do we integrate our user defined function block here? Imagine this module as a function block for managing the main loop, maybe for temperature control purposes. Within this, we might require various tasks, including temperature conversions between Celsius and Fahrenheit. To incorporate the function block, we'll name this module temp control. At the bottom of the toolbox, you'll find our UDFB listed under project. Dragging it to the beginning of our program, we'll stretch it a bit for better visibility. Here it is, our degrees C to degrees F user-defined function block. If we double click here, we can label this instance of the function block. Remember, we can use multiple instances of it. We'll name it temp1convert for now. The type is degrees C to degrees F, representing the instance of our UDFB. Now, we just need to configure the input and output variables and we should be set. On the input side, we'll say we're dealing with an oven temperature expressed in degrees Celsius. We'll name this oven temp. For the type, we'll select real. Now, we'll configure the output variable. This might be labelled as oven temp degrees F. Again, a new variable type since we're creating it now and it remains a floating point value. And that's pretty much it for the user defined function block here in IEC. It's quite straightforward as you can see with everything ready for implementation. We will now perform an error check as a precaution. This check indicates that everything is in order. The non-fatal error simply reminds us that we haven't generated any screens yet. No errors of the type we were on the lookout for have arisen up to this point. This outlines the necessary steps for both creating a user-defined function block and using it as an instance within our program. Now we'll export it to ensure we can utilise this user-defined function block in other programs. In the second program, within the UDFB module, we'll right click and select Export Logic Module. We'll name it degrees C to degrees F dot XK5. It's worth mentioning that we've previously created this UDFB, so we won't need to recreate it. However, the steps remain the same as we've just demonstrated. Right clicking, 
selecting Save and providing a name. We consistently name the UDFB files in alignment with the name we've assigned to the UDFB itself. This covers the process of creating and initially testing your UDFB. Next, we'll explore how to use this newly created UDFB in various IEC languages. To start, we'll exit the current program and we won't save it as we've already demonstrated the steps. Now we'll initiate a completely new IEC program. Here we'll showcase how to ensure that this new program can effectively utilise the user defined function block. To achieve this, we'll navigate to Control, then Logic Modules, we'll right click and then select Import Logic Module. This is where we'll import the previously saved XK5 file. By archiving this file, we'll be able to access it for any future project where it's required. Now that it's imported into the project, we can create a new main loop module. Let's say this time we're going to utilize function block diagram language for this module. We'll give it the name of an control. Within this routine, we'll perform the conversion using the user defined function block that we initially developed in Ladder Logic. We'll navigate back to the project area and locate degrees C to degrees F on our desktop. We'll give it a name, perhaps temp convert. We'll specify the type as the user defined function block. Everything seems correct. Now the next step is to place values on the screen. We'll position this here. Upon double clicking, it becomes the input variable for the project. For instance, let's say temp degree C. This is created on the fly. It is essential to ensure that we select the correct variable type, a floating point value, not a boolean. Here's the other side of the function block where we need to place this oven temp degrees F. We'll choose the appropriate variable type again. Now it's a simple matter of connecting these to the input and output, ensuring proper connections are made. There we have it, our function block diagram logic, utilizing a UDFB that we originally created in ladder logic. Now we'll replicate a similar process using structured text. We'll create another module this time utilising structured text and we'll name it temp display. Let's consider a scenario where we have a routine designated for displaying temperatures. We'll insert a comment here outlining the logic for converting temperatures from degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit for the purpose of display. Now we'll proceed to use this UDFB within structured text. However, there's a separate step involved. We can't directly integrate it into the code right away. Instead, we'll need to declare an instance of the UDFB. While it's technically possible to drag and rename it later, we prefer a more organized approach. We'll access the variable window and create a new variable there. Navigating to the global variables area, we'll right click and select add variable. This instance is specific to this section of the program, so we'll name it temp display. We'll assign the appropriate data type, which is degree C to F, which corresponds to the user defined function block type. Now that we've created temp display, we can reference this instance of the user defined function block within the structured text program. We'll initiate this by typing temp display and opening parentheses. This action prompts the appropriate syntax to appear. First, we'll add the necessary input value. The initial step involves defining the input value. For example, we'll consider a platinum temperature. This will be the platinum temp C value in degrees Celsius. We'll conclude this line with a semicolon. We get a message about the platinum temp degree C variable not being defined, so we'll create it now, and it will be real data type. In the next line, we address the function block's output. 
Assume we receive platinum temp degree F. This employs an assignment statement. We're assigning platinum temp degree F using the function block output degree F. To clarify, we're utilizing the function blocks input and output. The instance is temp display, the input is platinum temp degree C, and the output is platinum temp degree F. We establish this connection by referring to the function block's output. After arranging the syntax, the final phase is comprehensive testing. We need to verify everything works as intended. Since we already tested the user-defined function block, any potential issues shouldn't be linked to its logic, at least in terms of the function block itself. User-defined function blocks work equally well in both IEC and variable-based advanced ladder. Remember, UDFBs are really powerful tools to organize and copy logic easily. The way we make UDFBs is pretty much the same whether we use IEC or variable-based advanced ladder. Some details might be different, but the main idea stays the same. Also remember that a good thing about IEC is that you can create a UDFB in one language and use it in other languages too. That concludes our webinar for today. Thank you so much for listening and the Q&A session will begin shortly. As needed and that Okay, so next week we have comparing Ethernet IP, Modbus TCP, and EGD. Um, the registration for that is there as usual, um, so you can go and do that whenever you need to. And we have the following webinars then as well. Um, okay, I think that's it for today. Thank you all for joining, and I uh, hope to see you again next week. Have a good day.